Jesse in Miami. Hey, Jesse, what's on your mind today? Hey, hi, Tom. Hey, uh, the Yellow Vessel move movement, they, they remind me of the Occupy Wall Street movement. And just from hearing your conversation just with the, uh, your guests there, I just get the feeling the media is just trying to, uh, you know, just give it no direction intentionally, whereas if Thomas Paine was alive, it would be obvious that the problem is we have collateral with no representation. Yeah. yeah. And I know you follow me on this, but I'm just trying to say the media is like saying when you say, well, what do they want? But they, obviously, they want something, and they say, well, we want justice, economic justice. We want uh, to be able to pay our bills without getting on the streets. And the obvious root problem of that is the distribution of the wealth. And where does that go wrong? And it's obvious you have collateral with no representation. Why? Uh, you just don't hear that. All you hear is, what do they want? Right. You follow me on this? Yeah, what they, and, and, and the answer to what they want is they want a decent life. They want what we used to refer to as the American dream or the European dream or whatever. You know, the, the ability to raise a family, to put your kids through school, to, to not worry about your, your economic future. Um, you know, this is very simple, straightforward stuff. And, and various parties and various uh, groups have promised that over the years, but it looks like the only thing that's ever actually delivered on it is kind of F old, good old fashioned FDR Keynesian economics. Um, you know, it worked in Europe for, for, for 40 years. It worked in the United States for 40 years before Reagan. It worked in, in Europe after Reagan, not in the UK. I mean, you know, Reagan and Thatcher blew it up in the UK, the US, but those experiments I, have been I would, devastated. I, go ahead. I would go with Thomas Paine because yeah. when they had the Boston Tea Party, the basic problem was hey, they taxing us to make up for what they lost with, you know, the Indian uh, thing. And, and today, the obvious problem is wealth inequality. It's not tax inequality. So yeah. the only way to correct the problem back then was get the taxes representation. We had a revolution. We don't need to king the taxes when we could tax ourselves. The obvious answer today would be, you know, the economic kings, we don't need them to control our wealth. Yeah. The way I, I, I agree, Jesse. And, and here's the here's the danger. Every time that you see this you know, the, this pulling away from the American people of their, uh, you know, of a middle class life, essentially. Every time that there's a, like a giant crash, like there was in 1893, like there was in 1929. Um, every time you see that, ha like there was in 2008, every time you see that happen, not only is there a rise in left-wing responses, which typically actually address these problems, but there's also a rise in right-wing responses where they start blaming things on a particular minority group. In Germany in the 30s, it was Jews. Yeah, uh, we saw the rise of the right in the United States. In fact, in the 1930s, there was a very, very large fascist movement in the United States. So Charles Lindbergh was one of its leading spokespeople, um, and and I think we're seeing that right now in the in the whole Trump phenomena is the rise of the hard right. Yeah, hey, I would agree. The thing is, when you see right wing and left wing, I really think they look the same. One is just a knee jerk response to something that. One would go to the deeper roots. Yeah, I agree that they're both they're both responses to to these economic crises. Uh, but but when, if, when we look at history, we find that when the right rises up, whether it's in Argentina or Chile or Brazil or Germany or Italy or Spain or you know wherever, that it leads to disaster. Whereas when the left rises up, or at least the middle left, it it works. Jesse, thank you.